I'm Dennis Rude. These are tools I use to cut quill pens. There's a quill knife that is rounded on one side and flat on the other. A, an X-Acto knife that I like to use for putting the slit in. A finger protector which is a cut from a rubber glove for when I do shaving cuts. A toenail clipper that I can use for coarse removal of material. This is a bicycle spoke that the end has been shaped into a sort of sc uh, scraping spoon to get the membrane out of the inside of the quill that's part of the process of preparing quills before you cut them. This is a 30 power microscope that I find useful for checking the result of the cutting to see that the, the uh, facets at the nib end are, are sharp and, and true. Uh, this is a plastic plate that's clamped securely onto the edge of the table for the last couple of strokes, couple of cuts. This is a handout I uh, use when I teach. There's a rectangle at the end of the quill that is uh, significant to uh, aim for when you're cutting a quill. This is a strop and that's some rouge that's used on the strop for maintaining the knife that needs to be uh, kept very sharp. Extremely sharp knife is important with quill cutting. So, with the cutting of a quill, I'll try to demonstrate that. <clears throat> this is a goose quill, very large. It's maybe 16 or 17 inches long and uh, it's been heat treated to make it uh, a little bit harder in consistency so that you can put a slit in it essentially that's what the hardening is for you can't put a very good slit in without hardening the hardening process is uh, with the raw quills that you might get or buy you cut off the end and soak them in water up to the barbs say overnight and uh, in the next day with the bicycle spoke tool you can uh, scrape out this inner membrane that's loose inside a quill or not quite loose it needs to be scraped out and it comes out pretty easily when it's wet there's frequently a little bit left even after you're done but uh, you scrape out that that membrane and then and then plunge the the, the damp quill you, it, you, that you shake the water out of, you shake all the water out of it and put it in hot sand in a frying pan, 350 degrees, for about a minute. And that's the the uh, heat treatment process, sometimes called clarification because it results in a transparent, translucent uh, shaft of the quill. I. I frequently will uh, <clears throat> cut off just a arbitrary little quarter inch or something off the end of a quill before I start cutting and I can tell a little bit from the sound of that how brittle the quill is. It seems a little brittle. I cut back a little farther. Brittle meaning it was probably heated up a little bit too much. And also um, scraping off the outside of the quill with the back of the knife, not the sharp edge. You scrape this wispy material that comes off pretty easily off the back of the knife. And then the uh, making of the quill starts with putting a slit in. I put the knife, the exacto knife, in side and waggle it up a little bit and a slit appears maybe a quarter of an inch long on the uh, top of the quill as it were like that the opposite side from where the groove of the quill is you put that slit so that's the slit 
and it comes up to about there and I would like to start the cutting maybe an inch I mean half an inch or so further back yet than that on the quill with the knife removing material you need to have a strong controlled grip in order to do these pulling cuts with the sharp knife and that grip is um, the thumb of the hand holding the knife would be behind the thumb of the hand holding the quill and the quill kind of rests on that thumb or secured by that thumb and you pull the knife towards you somewhat slicingly mostly pulling and I can shape on one side and another keeping that slit in the middle until I get down to the width I want or the maximum width that you can get which would be the maximum amount of flatness that you can make on the inside of that tube it needs to be flat so I get it down in that general area I have quite a bit of slit actually so I will remove some of that with uh, toenail clipper and shape a little bit more the sides now I'm gonna flatten the inside of that tube with shaving cuts I'll put the finger protector on my thumb and uh, these are the shaving cuts and they pull and remove a little bit on both sides on the inside of the tube at the same time shaving that very end area flat which will turn a little matte um, surface that you can see and you can tell that it's flat I might shape it the sides somewhat more I like and then for the last uh, shaping cuts I have this plastic plate and you would need to put a bevel cut on the end 30 degrees or so right down to sort of a knife edge right near the end and then nibbing cuts which is just straight down so I position that knife at near the end and push straight down make a little snap sometimes a little sharper edge can be had if you make a second little nibbing cut right next to the first one shape perhaps a little bit more the quill Where is it? Like that. and then there is uh, another large shoulder cut removed from the top maybe five-eighths of an inch long or whatever this removes somewhat more than half the diameter of that barrel of the quill there and that is the cut quill it's a somewhat wide one and would probably work best if it had a reservoir attached onto it I would usually remove um, some of the bottom barbs to get out of the way of my hand holding the quill.